In this video, we'll see how the Lorentz transformations can be used to understand velocity addition and the relativity of simultaneity in special relativity. Let's start with how velocity addition works in special relativity. Let's say that Albert Einstein is standing still on the ground. A train is going by to the right at 90% the speed of light. Hendrik Lorentz is on board the train and fires a gun towards the right. The bullet travels out from the gun at 90% the speed of light relative to the train. So it's interesting to ask how fast the bullet is traveling in Einstein's frame. Figuring this out would involve changing reference frames twice. First from Einstein to the train, and then again from the train to the bullet. In Galilean relativity, we'll find that the speed of the bullet agrees with common sense. But in special relativity, the answer is more surprising. Let's start by looking at the problem in Galilean relativity. Let's say that Einstein uses spacetime coordinates t and x. The train uses coordinates t tilde and x tilde. And the bullet uses coordinates t smile and x smile. The Galilean transformation from Einstein to the train changes t and x into t tilde and x tilde using the velocity v, which is the velocity of the train according to Einstein. And the Galilean transformation from the train to the bullet changes t tilde and x tilde into t smile and x smile using the velocity u, which is the velocity of the bullet according to the train. To see how the velocities add in Galilean relativity, let's combine these two Galilean transformations together to get a new transformation from Einstein's coordinates to the bullet's coordinates. Time in Galilean relativity is universal for all reference frames, so t smile equals t tilde equals t. But for position, let's start with the equation for x smile, then substitute in the equations for t tilde and x tilde. If we factor out t from these terms, we see that we get a new Galilean transformation that changes x to x smile, using the velocity u plus v. This shows us that to combine velocities u and v in Galilean relativity, we literally just add them together using the plus operation. This agrees with our common sense experience that the speed of the bullet on the train should be added together with the speed of the train relative to the ground. So this seems like the obvious answer, but we'll find that it's not true in special relativity. Another way to get this result is to write out the two Galilean transformations in matrix form, writing the spacetime components in columns and converting between them with Galilean transformation matrices. We can start with the matrix equation converting the tilde coordinates into the smile coordinates and then substitute this matrix equation in for the column with t tilde and x tilde. Next, we can just multiply the Galilean matrix with speed u and the Galilean matrix with speed v to get the new Galilean matrix with speed u plus v. And this gives us the combined Galilean transformation that changes from Einstein's coordinates to the bullet's coordinates. With this rule for velocity addition, if we take c to be the speed of light, then 0.9c added with 0.9c gives us 1.8c, 1 1.8 times the speed of light. This means that in Galilean relativity, we can make something appear to go faster than light just by changing reference frames. So when Einstein sees Lorentz aboard the train going at 90% the speed of light, and Lorentz fires a bullet going 90% the speed of light relative to the train, Einstein sees the bullet going 180% the speed of light, according to Galilean relativity. Now let's see how velocity addition works in special relativity. Since we're working in special relativity, let's say that Einstein uses the spacetime coordinates ct and x. The train uses spacetime coordinates ct tilde and x tilde and the bullet uses coordinates ct smile and x smile. We'll start with two Lorentz transformations. The first Lorentz transformation changes from Einstein's frame to the train's frame. In other words, it changes ct and x into ct tilde and x tilde using the velocity v. 
which is the velocity of the train. The velocity v will have the corresponding coefficients beta v, which equals v over c, and gamma v, which equals 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. Remember that beta is just a fraction of the speed of light, so it's between 0 and 1. The other Lorentz transformation will change from the train's frame to the bullet's frame. In other words, it changes ct tilde and x tilde into ct smile and x smile, using the velocity u, which is the velocity of the bullet relative to the train. This velocity will also have the corresponding coefficients beta u, which is u over c, and gamma u. We can combine these Lorentz transformations together the same way as before. Starting with the ct smile equation, we can sub in these equations for ct tilde and x tilde. We can factor out gamma v to the front, and also combine these terms containing ct and x. And this gives us an equation converting from x and ct to ct smile. We can do the same thing for the x smile equation which gives us an equation for converting ct and x into x smile. So these are the equations for converting Einstein's coordinates ct and x into the bullet's coordinates ct smile and x smile. Another way to get the same result is to write the Lorentz transformations in matrix form. Again, writing the components in columns and transforming them using a Lorentz matrix. We can start with the matrix equation converting the tilde coordinates into the smile coordinates. When we take this matrix equation and substitute it into the column for ct tilde and x tilde, we end up with a new matrix equation where we multiply these two Lorentz matrices. And you can check for yourself that when we multiply these Lorentz matrices, we get a matrix with entries that exactly match the coefficients in our combined Lorentz transformation equations from earlier. So we can write out the combined Lorentz transformation equations either in the standard equation form or in the matrix equation form. It turns out that we can simplify the coefficients in these equations, or in other words, simplify this matrix here. To start, we'll factor out the term 1 plus beta u times beta v from each entry in this matrix. This means that the main diagonal entries become 1, because that's just dividing a term by itself, and the off diagonal entries become negative beta u plus beta v, all divided by 1 plus beta u times beta v. For now, we're just going to leave this matrix alone as it is and focus on the term out in front gamma u times gamma v times 1 plus beta u beta v. We can write out each gamma coefficient as 1 over the square root of 1 minus beta squared for their respective beta coefficients. We can also take the term 1 plus beta u beta v and square it if we put it under a square root sign. The square and square root sign balance out so the equation hasn't changed. Now, since all three of these terms contain square roots, we can put them all under the same square root sign using the rules of algebra. Next, I'm going to expand the multiplication in the denominator. 1 minus beta u squared times 1 minus beta v squared gives us 1 plus beta u squared beta v squared minus beta u squared minus beta v squared. Also in the denominator, I'm going to add and subtract the same term, and that won't change the equation since it will balance out. I'm going to add 2 beta u beta v, and then subtract 2 beta u beta v. Now, if you're observant, the first three terms in the denominator can be factored into 1 plus beta u beta v, all squared and the last three terms can be factored into beta u plus beta v, all squared, with a negative sign in front. Now, looking at these three terms under the square root sign, if we divide the numerator by 1 plus beta u beta v, all squared, and also divide the denominator by the same term, 1 plus beta u beta v squared, 
some of the terms will cancel and just go to one. And we end up with this result for the coefficient outside the matrix. So if we bring back the matrix, we've discovered that we can write out the coefficient in front as this big square rooted term here. And again, if you're observant, you'll notice that this big matrix formula here has the same format as a Lorentz matrix, except the beta coefficient is replaced by this big expression here, beta u plus beta v all over one plus beta u times beta v. This means that we now know how to combine the beta velocities in special relativity. When we do two Lorentz transformations in a row, they combine to give us a new Lorentz transformation with the beta coefficient being beta u plus beta v all over one plus beta u beta v. So we can see here that this combined Lorentz transformation changes Einstein's coordinates ct and x to the bullet's coordinates ct smile and x smile. And this new Lorentz transformation has this new beta coefficient. Let's see what this new beta coefficient is when beta u, the speed of the bullet relative to the train, is 90% the speed of light. And beta v, the speed of the train relative to the ground, is also 90% the speed of light. According to this formula, the new beta is 0 0.9 plus 0 0.9 all over 1 plus 0 0.9 times 0 0.9. This gives us 1.8 divided by 1.81 which is about 99.45% the speed of light. So even though in Galilean relativity, adding velocities of 0.9c and 0.9c ends up going faster than the speed of light, in special relativity, with this new velocity addition rule, the two velocities don't add together to go faster than the speed of light. And it turns out that if these two beta coefficients are between 0 and 1, so in other words the velocities are slower than the speed of light, their combined velocity, according to special relativity, will also be between 0 and 1. And here's the proof for that. I think we can all agree that 1 plus beta v equals 1 plus beta v. What might be less obvious is that beta u minus 1 is less than beta u minus 1 multiplied by the fraction beta v. Keep in mind that since beta u is between 0 and 1, then the left hand side, beta u minus 1, is a negative number. And on the right hand side, since we're shrinking the size of this same negative number by the fraction beta v, this will also give us a negative number, but it's scaled to be closer to 0. This means that the left-hand side is a more negative number than the number on the right-hand side. And therefore, the left-hand side is less than the right-hand side. Now if we take this inequality and add 1 plus beta v to both sides, then the inequality shouldn't change. We're just increasing both sides by the same number. Now on the left-hand side, positive 1 and negative 1 cancel out. And on the right hand side, after we distribute beta v into here, we notice that the positive beta v and the negative beta v cancel out. So we're left with beta v plus beta u is less than 1 plus beta v times beta u. Since 1 plus beta v times beta u is positive, we can divide both sides of the inequality by it without changing the inequality. If this was a negative number, we'd have to change the direction of the inequality, but because it's positive, we can leave the inequality sign as it is. And so we end up with the conclusion that beta u plus beta v all over 1 plus beta u times beta v is always going to be less than 1. This means that no matter how many times we do a Lorentz transformation, we can never make anything go faster than the speed of light because the resulting beta coefficient is always less than 1, according to this new velocity addition rule in special relativity. So we've confirmed that combining two Lorentz transformations gives us another Lorentz transformation where the new beta coefficient is always less than 1. This means that from Einstein's point of view, even though it takes two Lorentz transformations to change to the frame of the bullet, 
and both of those Lorentz transformations involve a speed of 90% the speed of light, the bullet is still going less than the speed of light according to Einstein because of this new velocity addition rule. In fact, if this bullet somehow managed to shoot out a second bullet going 90% the speed of light relative to the first bullet, that second bullet still wouldn't reach the speed of light in Einstein's frame. Even if this process continued with a third, fourth, fifth bullet and so on, none of these bullets would ever reach the speed of light. Because of this theorem we proved about how the new velocity addition rule always results in a beta coefficient that's less than 1, the velocity of objects is fundamentally limited to be less than the speed of light in a vacuum, C. So we need to accept that in special relativity, no object can ever reach the speed of light. Now that we've covered velocity addition, let's talk about the relativity of simultaneity. You already know from previous videos that if we bounce a beam of light between both ends of a train car, we can establish a line of simultaneity in a space-time diagram by taking the event point halfway between sending and receiving the light signal to happen at the same time as the event point where the beam of light is reflected. And if we repeat this experiment for a moving train car, the lines of simultaneity for the passengers on the train will be diagonal from the perspective of someone standing on the ground. So in some reference frames, we see time passing by in a space-time diagram as a horizontal line moving upward. But in other reference frames, we see time passing by as a diagonal line moving upward. So what this means is that two events that appear to happen at the same time in one reference frame will not happen at the same time in another reference frame. So in one reference frame, the sun and the star event happen at the same time. But in another frame, the star event happens first. And in yet another frame, the sun event happens first. So events that are simultaneous in one frame will not be simultaneous in another frame. Simultaneity is relative in special relativity. Now, after learning about the relativity of simultaneity, you may have some concerns. For example, let's say that at one event in space-time, we fire a bullet from a gun, and then a bit later, the bullet hits this vase, which shatters into pieces. In this frame, the bullet is fired first, and then the vase is shattered after. But since the order of events is relative, you might wonder if we could find another reference frame where the order of events is reversed, where the vase shatters first and then the bullet is fired after. If you could figure out how to do this, it would be very concerning because you would have broken the causal relationship between these events. You would have found that the effect, the vase shattering, happens before the cause, the bullet being fired. However, even in special relativity, we cannot make effects happen before their causes. Earlier in this video, we learned that no matter how fast you go, and no matter how many Lorentz transformations you do to switch reference frames, you can never go faster than the speed of light. Remember, the time axis in a space-time diagram represents the path of an object in an inertial frame. Since nothing can go faster than the speed of light, the time axis is always going to exist within this highlighted region of the space-time diagram. This region is called the light cone because it contains all the events in space-time between a beam of light fired to the left and a beam of light fired to the right. Likewise, the position axis is always going to exist outside the highlighted region, outside of the light cone. It is impossible to make the time and position axes cross this 45 degree line with a slope of 1 that represents a beam of light. It's impossible because this would mean the time axis, the path of an object at constant velocity, is going faster than light in some reference frames. For example, an observer with a vertical world line would see an object on this time axis going faster than light. So it is impossible for the time and position axes to cross over each other using Lorentz transformations. And it is impossible for the position axis to cross over into the light cone. 
Since we can't get the position axis to cross over into the light cone, we can never get the position axis to cross both of these events, the event of the gunshot and the event of the vase getting shattered. This means that we can never find a Lorentz transformation where the gunshot and the vase getting shattered happen at the same time. It also means that we can never push the position axis even farther in such a way that would reverse the order of the events, so that the vase getting shattered happens first, and the bullet getting fired happens second. Basically, if two events in a space-time diagram are connected by a line that's slower than the speed of light, it means that these events could have a causal relationship between them. One event might cause the other, for example, a gunshot causing a vase to break. Events that can have a causal relationship between them can never have their order switched. It is mathematically impossible to have their order switched using a Lorentz transformation because the position axis can never cross into the light cone. On the other hand, if two events are connected by a line that's faster than the speed of light, it means that it is impossible for the two events to have a causal relationship. Nothing that we send out from the first event, not even a light beam, can reach the second event because the events are too far apart in space. It is only events like this that have no causal relationship between them that are capable of having their order switched in different reference frames using a Lorentz transformation. So we can see that in special relativity, even if we can switch the order of some events by changing reference frames, we can never actually break causality. A pair of events with a causal relationship can always be connected by a line that's slower than the speed of light. And so the position axis will never be able to have a slope that is equal to or more vertical than the line connecting the two events. So to summarize this video, we learned that combining two Lorentz transformations gives us another Lorentz transformation, with this law here for adding the beta velocities of the reference frames. We showed that no matter which velocities we use, it is impossible to make an object travel faster than light using Lorentz transformations. We also talked about the relativity of simultaneity, and how the order of events can change in different reference frames in special relativity. However, it is impossible to break causality. If two events are connected by a line that's slower than light, it means they could have a causal relationship, and therefore Lorentz transformations cannot change their order. However, when events are connected by a line that's faster than light, it means it is impossible for these events to have a causal relationship and so we can use a Lorentz transformation to change frames and switch the order that they occur in.